on this podcast, we haven't covered the FA Cup this season. Cup weekends we've taken off. The reason is that for the big clubs particularly, the Cup is no big deal at the moment. But when they get to the quarterfinal, semifinal stage, it becomes a big deal because it's still a big trophy. There's a degree of prestige attached to it and silverware uh, is silverware. And at that stage, uh, quarterfinals onwards, they begin to take a serious interest. In the early rounds, they'll play promising young players. They'll rotate their team and rest maybe some of the better players. But this weekend, a cup match was played that really mattered to both clubs. Manchester United at home to Liverpool, quarterfinal match, the old enemies, they really don't like each other. There's some hype around some of these derbies, but this is real dislike. I use that word mildly. And to discuss this cup tie and indeed one or two other matters, I'm joined by a man who won two FA Cup winners medals and one of them for Manchester United in 1963, but also was on the losing Leeds team beaten by Sunderland, most notably in a shock result way back in the day. John, the Cup was a big, big deal, wasn't it? It was the match of the season. Everybody tuned in. BBC television would come on about 11 in the morning and there'd be a huge build-up to the game, and it mattered. But those days are gone. Well, I think they're gone, Eamon, until they get to the stage now we saw at the weekend. Yes. You know, we had Liverpool and Manchester United and all the big teams. And I think it's gone because there's so many competitions now. You know, you have the League Cup and you have the Champions, Champions League, League, Europa and League. All. Yeah, well, you know, that in, in the old days, they weren't there. Well, the Champions League might, might have been just about there, but there was no League Cup and that at that stage. So it was the, 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 the big day. Yes. Uh, I think there's still... Some part of it. Yes. Now, when you get to the semi final cup now, like the, the and, and certainly the supporters love it, I mean, When their team gets gets to the big day. Yeah. They love it. You know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Out. It's still one of the big deals when it comes to the to, to the crunch. Yeah. You know, but unfortunately there's so many matches, as you said early on in, in, in the introduction, that you know, people don't get interested in the clubs don't get interested really yeah. in the cup in the early early rounds. Obviously, when we get to the semis and the big matches like Liverpool and Manchester United and Chelsea, and the big teams in it. But the supporters, the supporters of the teams like Liverpool and Manchester United, and any team that gets to the cup final, they love it. Yeah, I mean. it's a it's a big day out. Yeah, and of course, all the smaller clubs have David and Goliath dreams. When I was playing for Millwall, we thought we always hoped for a good cup run. Our best cup run was actually involved beating Everton at Goodison Park when Everton were a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and we were knocked out that season by Leicester, who had an old teammate of yours at Leeds, Alan Clark, playing for him at the time. They beat yeah. us 1-0 and he scored a goal. He stole it. Now, John, this rivalry between Manchester United and Liverpool, it's serious, isn't it? I mean, it, yeah. it, it extends beyond the pitch. The fans don't like each other. They're too... Northern cities just uh, a few miles apart, but this is real rivalry. And to go back to Sunday's game, which Manchester United took the lead after 10 minutes, uh, McTominay scored again for United. Even though Liverpool have a big interest and a long injury list, a big interest in the Premier League and the Europa League as well at the moment, the idea that they might win four th- trophies in uh, Klopp's last season is very attractive to them. And there was no quarter given or asked in this game. Let me just ask you first, John, about the gap between these teams. Now, Liverpool have a lot of players out, big players, Konate, Trent Alexander, Arnold, uh, Jota, this young lad Jones, who's a seriously good midfield player. But Manchester United are struggling by their own high standards uh, Eric Ten Hag is their coach. Most people seem to feel that he's on borrowed time at the moment. But they took the lead and the game had an intensity about it, didn't it? 
Oh yeah, they, they, well they always do. The, the Manchester United Liverpool games are the top games probably in the in the Premiership. Yeah, uh, I mean, but um, yeah, was, and especially when it gets into the last rounds of the yeah. of the FA Cup, you know, the, the, now, now you see the the FA Cup at its best. Yeah, with the supporters from both clubs, uh, and Liverpool are in the situation. Uh, where before the weekend that they could have won four trophies. Yes. And it's it's a very, very difficult with the amount of games that's played nowadays, I mean, you know, you've got the Champions League and you know, all sorts of different cups. And uh for for Liverpool to, to do that would would be the best ever achievement in the Premier League if they won four trophies. Oh well also the final of the FA Cup would have been at Wembley of course and it yeah. would have been Jurgen Klopp's last game as yeah. uh, coach of Liverpool. Now, uh, United took the lead, but I thought Liverpool still looked the better side, passed the ball more, made United struggle. But it's what did you make of the first half, the rest of the first half? Just before halftime, McAllister, who I think we both agree is a real good player, he equalised for Liverpool, and it was game on. Oh yeah, it looked. It, I mean, it, it, what made it such a good game, then? Because at one stage, it looked like Liverpool would definitely win. You know, they went two one in front, as yes. we know, and they looked the better team. Yeah. Uh, and then there was an incident when they were two one up. They were there was six of them made a break. Yeah. Remember in the game, it was six on and, two. Yeah, you know that was a, it, obviously a great opportunity to to. to win the game. I don't think uh, Man U would have come back from it, but they didn't take advantage of that, and, and Manchester United come back into it. And that's football, I mean, you know, the, the, there's never, it's never a sure thing on the pitch when there's one goal or, or no. just one in it. it, it you, you just don't know. And uh, I think, uh, and, and then Manchester United did, did come back into the game and uh, laid on in the game on it. I yeah. thought Liverpool slipped up in Allowing them the winner, particularly Eamon, because yeah. I think what happened was I think Liverpool. This is all. This is all the, the mental stuff, in my opinion, that goes on on the pitch in this particular situation. Uh, you know, they got a corner kick. I think it was for the in the last minute when it was. I think it was three three at this stage, and obviously they, they had been in front. I think the mentality then is right. We're going going out all the way here to get the to get the winner. Yeah. You know, so I don't think they were even thinking about defending. I mean, and this happens now. What happens with some some of the, the, the teams and some of the best players and some of the best captains would actually cop on to this? Yeah, you know. Yes, we, we, we still have to defend. We're, we're going for the winning goal because we we look like we're going to win the match. But you still have to defend. Yeah, or the manager over a period of time. I mean. You know, it says, look, if ever get into this situation, or been in this situation, you have, still have to defend. Yeah. Because they were throwing everything at, at, at United, as we know. And then they got the break for the goal, from out of the, totally out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, and, I should say that Salah had made it 2-1. It was 2-1 at half time. Yeah. And Salah scored yeah. on the whistle. That's, I think, his 14th goal against uh, Manchester United in 15 games. Uh, and when they had that, it was, I thought, five or on or six on two in a yeah. breakaway. Salah was off the pitch, and that is a situation. He'd been substituted at that stage, and it's a situation where Liverpool would be deadly uh, normally. Klopp went mad on the touchline when they blew it. But I want to ask you about Manchester United. I thought it was, they were frantic. They threw bodies at it, players we'd never heard of, really. But one of whom became the hero in the end, Diallo, and uh, he got the winning goal. But Liverpool, and uh, as you said there, the captain is a huge role to play. I thought they were very complacent in the second half, John. They came out 2-1 up, they passed the ball around, but they... The intensity they'd had when they were chasing the game was gone. And a central figure in all of that was Van Dyke, who's having a great season and seems to have recovered his pace after a bad hamstring injury. But he was the one controlling the, the tempo of the game from centre half. Well, it's, 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 it's difficult to do. 
view that from centre half. Um, yeah, I know. You know it's probably wrong. It's, well, yeah, because the midfield players are the ones, especially the one the central midfield, who's uh, can go anywhere on the pitch. You know, he's the one yeah. that can get onto the players and do the stuff. Generally speaking, yeah. Uh, but like you can, we can we can talk all we like about football, I mean, but it's something happens you don't expect it to happen. Somebody scores a goal that they never scored before in their life. That's all. That's what makes it such a great game. That to be able to 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 win matches when things are not going your way. Yeah. You, you you do certain things or you get certain things, and it happens. A lot of things happen accidentally. I mean, you know. Yeah. You see one player, he's, he's never scored a goal with his left foot in his life and he hits one, for, he gets a crack. That's all part of the game and you, and you can only control it as much as you can, you know? I think when you're 2-1 up, John, in any game, the especially at half-time in the dressing room, coach has a job to do there. Listen, <laughs> if you get go for the, ne- the third goal, then it's over. Mm. I didn't think Liverpool in the second half ever did that. I think they were almost passing the ball around. They had huge amounts of possession in the second half, but with no real penetration, no real effort to get in behind United and finish the game off. That was that would have been my read on it. Well, I think you're probably right, I mean, Now, sometimes you do have a player in the pitch who would be captain or an yes. influence to say, we've got to... Step it up a bit to, yes. to get a goal. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yep. This all happened so quickly because they were, Liverpool were by far and away the better team in the first half, right? So when you come out for the second half, the mentality is the same. Oh, we're the better team. We're winning two ones, no yep. problem. And the only way there's no problem is you get another one and another one. Yeah, and, and and that doesn't happen unless you've got a really really good captain or maybe the manager at half half time might have said. I might not have said, listen, we've got to go for the next one as much as we possibly can. We yeah. don't know what was said in the dressing room. I mean, he could have said he could have said that and it still wouldn't happen. Yeah. But maybe he didn't say it at all because you're so much on top. It's it's, it's all a mental thing on the pitch, I mean. It, it's it's for, for you do get players who can who can say you have time or the manager, Look, we've been on top. We're two one up. We're only a goal up. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Get get another goal. You, you, you don't know what's been said in the dressing room. Ideally, that is the thing to say. Yep. We're two one up. We, 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 we haven't won the game by a long way yet. We've still got to do it. All that goes on, or should go on, in the dressing room. Sometimes it doesn't go on. So you go into second half, and as you know, I mean, or everybody knows in football, you never know what's going to happen. The most outrageous thing, some fellow that's never scored a goal in his life hits one from 30 <laughs> <Yeah>. yards. <laughs> we'll come to that at the end of the match, but I wonder, just uh, to, to take an overview of it, John, can, can you say of this match, did Manchester United change and do something right? Was that the winning of it? Or did Liverpool lose it? I take. Well, uh, well, what do you t- think? Well, I think Liverpool lost in from the corner kick at the end, Eamon. Yeah. They, they, I think what would be there? This is a this is a chance to win it. You know they've been in front, and Manchester United are coming, but this is the chance to win it, right? So they're throwing everything at it. Yeah. Instead, like what you have to do in that situation, a very very difficult thing to do. We still have to defend this. Yes. You know, like if, if you wouldn't do that at the start of the match, I mean, you wouldn't have that mentality. At the start of the game, from a corner kick for yeah. you, you'd attack the ball. Yeah, you'd attack the ball, but you'd say, "Well, don't overdo. We still have to defend it." Yeah. But when you get into a situation like that, when there's an awful lot happening, that they were in front, they looked like they were going to win the game, and this was an opportunity to win it. Last corner kick of the game, because definitely the Liverpool players wouldn't think that Manchester United would score from this position. And they certainly Nobody wouldn't would. they certainly <laughs> wouldn't think that Anthony, who'd come on as a sub, yeah. uh, would score it because he's been a, a grave disappointment, yeah. to put it mildly. He didn't start the match. He hasn't started recently. He, he cost 85 million from Ten Hag's previous club, uh, Ajax, and he's been really a, a surprising and shocking failure. When he scored... It, it, there was only three minutes to go. Uh, yeah. Liverpool are still two one up. When he scored the goal, he was put tapping his badge, saluting the United fans. 
you think he was Ronaldo, but he's he's no Ronaldo. He got, he got a red car, Damon. No, that was the guy. No, that was the guy well, later on the yellow. The other goal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, he got a yeah. red car from Ten Hag about six <laughs> weeks ago. But, <laughs> but but that's but the point is that I mean, when when if you look at the mentality of it, when you go out. When there's no score at the start, the manager would say, "Now be careful from corner kicks. Don't overdo it. Make sure you've got got somebody uh, standing back to, to to defend." Now, when it got to the situation there, the attitude was, "We've got a chance of winning this match now." We're yeah. going to, and they did throw on it. There was nobody defending. Yeah. Because once once the, once uh, United made the break, the two lads they were on their own. I know it's Liverpool lost, but the, but the, there was nothing. Going through anybody's head on the Liverpool team, yes, to say we still have to defend this, yeah, and th that was uh, the problem. Now, extra time comes again. United now are throwing everything. I mean, it was a great. It, it's a game that people won't forget who saw it. Really, definitely. I mean, that's what that. I mean, that's what's great about football. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. At one stage in the game there, it looked like Liverpool were going to, going to win the game and win it comfortably. Yeah. But that's football. That's what makes it such a great game. I mean, what you get is cons the, the great teams have con a consistency yeah. about them that other teams don't have. And certainly Man United don't have a consistency at the moment. You know, that's what they, they do, what they're doing at the moment, and they finish up winning the semi-final of the Cup, where Liverpool probably had the best part of the game. Yeah. And and that's what makes the game so great. Just, you can't I mean if the great the game was so predictable, Eamon. I mean, yeah. Nobody'd be going to the matches. Just to go to what's gonna happen now more than likely is United should be Coventry and they will go to Wembley and Manchester City, who are playing Chelsea in the other semi final, should win that match. So you could have a Manchester City uh, Manchester United final just to, for United you could, you could have it the other way as well Eamon <laughs> I don't think I, I'll have a bet with you on that I know you don't bet but I'll give you good odds now Roy King said after the match and as I say I don't think he's a great uh, uh, analyst but he did say after the match and I think he might be right this could light up United's season uh, in other words you, you, you win a match like this and it can have a dramatic effect on morale and belief. And I'm not sure it applies to United with the players they have, with the captain they have, Fernandez, who, by the way, dropped into the back four yeah. for the last, when they were chasing the game. He, he said it can light up your season. Is that your, would you take that view? Yeah. 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 Definitely, I Eamon. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing what can happen in, 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 in a situation. I've seen it happen in the past. I mean, I had a little part, part of it when I was at West, West Brom when I was a player yeah. manager. Didn't get a good start there. I mean, didn't, weren't going well. We went to Bristol, Bristol Road, Bristol City, I think it was, who had won five ones during the week. They were up on the top of the table, uh, odds on for promotion. And we beat them 2 0. Yeah. At Bristol. Yeah. And we never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's you the know, season you, you got promoted, like, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, into yeah. the what was then first division is now Premier League. Yeah, but, yeah. It, but that it, it it certainly can happen in one match. You know, yes, the importance of it. It is good could happen to Manchester United. The importance of that game, the semi final of the cup. Uh, the cup, you know, the they 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 have a chance now, good chance of winning the cup unexpectedly. It, yeah, it does, it does happen, and it has happened in the past. I mean, definitely. Yeah, and now, the, just as I would say, there's a good chance, but the reason United are, well, they're actually in the Premier League table now up to sixth. They're six points behind Spurs, and they both play the same number of games. That Champions League spot is critical, although there is talk now that the top five clubs in the major leagues might go on to the, the new revamped Champions League, but we'll talk about that some other some other time the coach there's a question mark big question mark over Fernandez, the captain big question mark over I'm not sure they have enough quality or character John in the team and some of the people with character Maguire is one uh, is sitting on the bench most of the time although he came on for the last 20 minutes uh, of normal time uh, on Sunday, just in terms of Liverpool, John, the effect uh, it, it 
Klopp was mad and lost his temper at the press conference after the game. Uh, Somebody was annoying him, Amy, was asking for stupid questions. It was a Norwegian journalist. I didn't think it was a stupid question. Um, but anyway, leave well, that. When you've you just been beaten the way you've been your manager, Amy, you don't be in the mood for anything, to be quite honest. You know yeah, I, mean? I know, John. You were... Anyway, I, they all, I know the lad has a job and all that. And yeah, all well, that, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> you, t- you your attitude to the press was... I can't repeat it on a family program, as they say, but uh, it wasn't, uh, they weren't top priority for you. But uh, the the point is, I mean, Liverpool go on, they've had some shocking injury problems and they, the, they, they're they continuing. They found some very good young players, John, and, you know, really... I mean, Elliot, who came on and, and actually put them in front in extra time, 3-2, superb player. And they have found some players. I think he's bought badly with Saboslai and Endo. Now, Endo only costs 14 million. He looks like a guy who costs 14 million. Saboslai, no way. But he's bought really well with Nunes, Diaz also. And they go on... Just as someone who played in a team that, that were in this position many times, if being knocked out of the cup, John, will that help their Premier League uh, endeavours? Will it help them? Fo- we're focused now. They're second to Arsenal, Manchester City. There's three clubs, just a point separating the three of them. Will it be helpful to Liverpool to get yeah. to be it'll out of be it? Help- it will be helpful, Eamon, because they'll have less games. Yep. Yep. There's too many games now. I mean, to be trying to win four four trophies this season is is amazing. Yeah. I mean, if you win two, if you win two, if you win one, you're doing really well. Yeah, and they only played last Thursday night, the second leg of their Europa yeah. League. Now they won five one. It wasn't a strong team. Sparta Prague they played, but I mean they played a, you know what for anyone uh, is a big match. Full house at Anfield just three days before this match on Sunday. Um, that, that's where it's gone. It's gone crazy, Eamon. Yeah. I mean, e- even in my day, we we were we were going for trophies n- nearly every year, and we're I mean, talking about maybe yeah. at most three three trophies. Yeah. It's like you can't. I don't think you can do it. I mean, ideally in football for footballers, I think one match a week is ideal. Yeah. You have a chance to to do your training. You got you got a chance to 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 if you got a few knocks to get over the knocks, uh, do the training, do very very little on the Friday. All the things that's needed to, to be in perfect condition for a match on a Saturday. Yeah, that's not happening now. No way. You no way. Liverpool, they're playing two matches or three matches in 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 twelve days and all that. Yeah. You know it. it it's 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 crazy stuff, really. You know. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. Let me get some good news, John. Top of the championship, Leeds United, and on Saturday they beat Millwall, my old club, and they look good for promotion now, John. They've come a long way, made up a lot of ground very quickly. So you must be happy about that, because I know uh, you still take a great interest in it. Yeah, they've they've done well, Eamon. They've gone top of of the league. Yeah. Uh, Leicester behind them with a game in hand, Uh, but Leicester are having a bad time, Richard. So they've they've made a great... uh, Run and the last oh, whatever it was, they lost a couple of matches around Christmas time, I think. Yeah, and the look didn't look good. And they have won, I think they've won nearly every match in Rome won since then. So they, they, they've had a great run. Leicester have, have, a, have had a bit of a bad run. Um, so it, it, it's looking good for them at the moment, right? And of course, that's where your heart still is. I note the goals against the, they've only conceded 28 goals. Whereas Leicester has conceded 33 and Ipswich have conceded 49. So <laughs> they should be all right if they keep a few clean sheets. Yeah. Just a final question about Manchester United because yeah. I've been pretty hard on them and, you know, you have, I guess, but certainly I have. And this coach, does Sunday's game, the way it was won, the fact that they're in the FA Cup semi final, will that save Ten Hag? It could well do, Eamon. I'd be surprised if it doesn't. That was a huge match. Yeah. You know, against Liverpool, they were behind in the match. Looked like they were going yeah. well beaten, to be quite honest. 
and it, done, it has changed things over the years for different clubs. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And if they, it, particularly if they go on to win it. Yeah, back in the day, it saved Alex Ferguson, they say, when yeah. one cup match that he won. So who That's knows? That's right. It, 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 can, it, can, it does happen, and it has happened in the past. So, uh, you know, that, that's football. It's an amazing game. It, 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 it makes it so attractive in everything that happens. Most things that happen in football, the match on the weekend, yep. then going into the, the cup, the semi finals now for Manchester United. Uh, will, will, it, will it change everything for them? It could do. It's happened before, and it can happen again. Okay, John, as always, it's great to hear from you. We'll watch out for Eric Ten Hag. I doubt if it will change everything because he spent all the money on pretty average players. Uh, even if they showed up, one of them, Anthony, showed up on Sunday with a big, big, big goal. We're grateful to John Giles, as always, 